Now we've been talking a lot about the air, the work of air. We talked about how the air causes the winds and how those winds also affect rainfalls in different parts of the world at different seasons and also how the air brings about sea currents, warm currents, cold currents and how they affect weather in different places of the earth. So we've been talking a lot about the work of air and of course we talked about wind erosion, you remember? Now in our next set of lessons we are now going to talk about the work of water. So let's see what we have under these various lessons that have to do with the work of water. Think about all the rain that falls upon the earth and think about all the water that comes from the melting snow. Some of that water goes on the ground and some of the water remains on the surface of the earth. It gathers together and it collects in the hollows and the gullies and it begins to form streams and eventually rivers. As it travels, it forms its own path. When it comes to things in its way, if they are light enough, the river just picks them up and takes them along. But if there are large, larger obstacles like this one, the river just goes around it and forms its course. It carves its path. Green liquid, it goes sideways and downwards. Look at all that the river has picked up and carried away. It just makes its own path as it moves along. When the force of the river is less, the river drops what it has been carrying. Eventually, the river empties into the ocean or sea or another river. The river calves and carries the carving. It calves and carries deposits. Whether it is a large river or a small river, it does this work of carving, carrying, and depositing. So the river keeps on doing its work of carving, carrying, and depositing. The place where the river begins is called the source. The bottom of the path it carves is called river bird. The edge of the path it curves is called river bank. So again, the source where it begins, 
the river bed, the path it has, the river bank, another river bank, so that the river banks, the edges of the path it has. The path that the river takes is the course. The place the river empties into another body of water is called the mouth. If another stream had joined the main course, then we'll call that a tributary. If another stream, if you imagine another stream had joined the course here, if, if there were another stream here, that would be a tributary. If the mouth of the river, there's a triangular place where deposits are made, that is called a delta. Now let's talk more about water. At different periods of time, the soil on the surface of the earth has been different. So as the water over the years, in these different periods of time, did its work of carving, carrying, and depositing different things on its path, we find that at different periods of this time, these soil deposits get settled as we see them here. And as a result of the fact that at different periods of time, these soil were different. They just settled over the years. And eventually, you find different layers settled. We can see that clearly here because the deposits are still settling. But you can use your imagination to imagine how the earth at different times of its existence, water has carried these various soil and carried them to different places where they have settled, forming different layers. So we call this kind of settlement, what we see here, we call this sediment. And we find layers, the different layers will be called strata. So all the deposits together are called sediments. We can carry out our own research, maybe in books, and get more information on sediments. And all these happen as a result of the fact that water continues to do its work of carving, carrying, and depositing materials in its path as it flows downwards and sideways, being a liquid. So that's my lesson for you today.